Okay, this was a very busy morning, but I still um, got the calculations done uh, overnight and let's see how surely Russia is already qualified and we look at some other implications, especially in Group H, did Japan and Senegal now leapfrog Colombia and Poland in the calculations. So let's have a look. Well, um, before I go through the calculations, although you can already see them or the results of the calculations, I want to tell you that I actually updated uh, my data slightly um, before every time there were results in I updated only the ELO rating but now I also approximate the FIFA rating so maybe if there are a little bit more changes than usual um, but it will stay more consistent I think it makes uh, sense as well to have those two ratings reflected. I want to keep the bookie rating fixed um, because this was the assessment pre-tournament and getting the changes in from the other two ratings actually will already cause enough of a change to make it a worthwhile prediction. Um, it's the first time I'm doing this. There might be other ways uh, that I can think of, but I think this was for me the quickest way of having the actual results reflected in my calculations as, as well, because um, I remember last time when um, uh, Spain lost 5-1 to the Netherlands. They were still highly favored against Chile when it was clear that this had a big effect and it would have been reflected in the ELO rating for sure. Also in the FIFA ratings, so such a heavy loss uh, just should drop your rating and should be a little bit more uh, evenly. And well, let's go right into it. Um, since we already have 17 games, I'm trying to make this a little bit a longer video and also look into the groups themselves. Um, but for now, here's the overall standings. And due to my calculations now, Belgium is in third place and Spain dropped a little bit because Spain was not as high in the FIFA rating um, as in the ELO rating, but uh, very close together. So I don't pay too much attention to this flip-flopping because it will change anyway soon and the picture will become clearer. Uh, there's also a little bit of flip-flopping uh, here in uh, places 11 to 14. I think um, the biggest one, if you like, is that now Egypt is out of the picture as is uh, Saudi Arabia. That was not surprising. Big risers were, of course, Senegal with that win. Also, Japan rose a little bit. Uh, I was surprised to see Poland kind of constant. Russia, of course, now that they're qualified, their chances will improve. But I was surprised that those two are still featuring that high, especially the Poland didn't move, but Colombia did. So that was a little bit of a surprise. Well, if you look at the tournament, um, here we see in Group A, both Uruguay and Russia are more or less qualified. I mean, this is really the highly unlikely scenario that is missing to 100%, that um, Russia gets even on points uh, with Saudi Arabia and uh, Uruguay. It is highly unlikely, so this is more or less 100%, and I'm sure that after today's game between Egypt and Saudi Arabia, it will be that way. It's also interesting to say that each that, um Uruguay still favored over Russia, which makes sense. They are a heavy, they are heavy favorite against Russia, so they should make more points, and they are he even heavier favorite against Saudi Arabia, so they should pick up a few more points. Russia is only expected to make 0.99 points of Uruguay. Uh, not too many changes here. Uh, the other one where there are big changes, of course, Group H, that uh, which played yesterday, which completely turned upside down. It's now the two winners are ahead of the two losers. This matchup in the next round is a crucial one, um, or as you might expect. Now, uh, the changes in the expected tournament are very, very minor. Um, I still have Sweden here, and due to the new rating, I forgot to say that, there's a little bit more separation now between Germany and Sweden, but still the qualification probabilities are flipped. So, um, it's more likely that Germany will qualify, but on average, Sweden gets more points. Uh, watch yesterday's video for explanation for, the, for that rather counterintuitive fact. But those are things that can, of course, happen. So I have Sweden here. Japan is now playing against Belgium. So um, what look to be really tough matchups for Brazil and Belgium now become a lot easier with playing Sweden 
and Japan, the rest remains the same. And of course, in the lower half, uh, we have now England playing Senegal, which on paper is surely an interesting matchup. Uh, but Senegal is not as highly rated as Colombia, so therefore, there is also uh, England a bit more heavy favorite. Remains always the same. I still have England in the semifinals against Spain at the moment. Well, let's look a little bit into the groups. Uh, I'm planning to do this now every, um, you know, once around finishes. Hope the internet comes. Yes. Ah, sorry. This is group H. Yes, here we have group A. Let me go to the calculation sheet, uh, the calculation package. I did it in our studio. Uh, all calculations are done in R, which is a very nice statistical package uh, to do those in. So group A, here we see again, those are the probabilities of reaching at least this stage. So of course, everyone's at least fourth in the group, so therefore we have the one here. But as you can see, both um, Russia and Uruguay, <laughs> both more or less have secured third place, so that is not interesting as well. Here's the qualification pro probabilities. Uruguay is slightly below Russia, but then as Uruguay is favored, they have a slightly higher chance of qualifying for quarterfinal, semifinal, and so on. So that uh, was the big change is of course happening here that now really those two look set to go on to the next round. Uh, group B, not much has changed. Iran is now more or less a lock for third place. Spain and Portugal should go through with Spain being slightly favored. Um, Group C now, of course, has Denmark uh, separated from Peru before it was uh, very even. Uh, those two together, I think, with a slight advantage to Peru. Now we have Denmark ahead of uh, Peru, quite clearly so, uh, which is also not unexpected as uh, this was the one even matchup. Both are expected to beat Australia, both are expected to lose to France, so that well, kind of could have been the decider, most likely was. Group D is the first slightly interest, more interesting one because we have again some flip flop and we have Croatia being favored over Argentina. No, no not favored, but more likely to reach the um, um, second round. But from the quarterfinals on, as Argentina is higher rated, they are more likely to move further. A uh, similar picture in Group E, where, of course, Serbia beat Costa Rica and therefore secures third place, but that doesn't count. Still, Switzerland is favored over Serbia uh, to qualify and also makes sense. Switzerland is higher rated, so therefore they are still the favorites. But this is the crunch matchup uh, in this uh, Group E for the second day. Group F, probably the most interesting one. Look at the Germany curve. Um, they both Mexico and Sweden, by having three points, are now clear favorites to make the third place. Since Germany is favored over Sweden, uh, we talked about that uh, yesterday. Yes, Germany is more likely to qualify. Sweden gets more average points is because Sweden has already three points. Germany has zero, so there's more variability in the distribution. And since Germany can, is very highly rated, actually second highest rating, this variability is quite large. So therefore, it gets more probability mass in this area, whereas Sweden's is much more condensed and therefore gets less chance of qualifying. Um, so that's the interesting one. Uh, Mexico, of course, is the favorite now to go through, but look at the quarterfinal. Mexico, even though being first place, is not as likely to reach the quarterfinal as Germany. And again, down to rating. Even if Germany's rating dropped uh, because of that, Germany's favorite. Of course, Germany made huge losses here. They were up here uh, prior to the tournament. So there's still a long way to go. Group G looks very clear-cut now, even more so, uh, those two have practically qualified. Yes, it's still uh, possible that one of them is, does not qualify, but um, I don't re no one really sees it realistically. And now Group H flip-flopped. Uh, we had those two were ahead, those two were behind. Senegal looks strong because Senegal is uh, high, highly favored, but of course, getting to the quarterfinals, that's the big step. 
and there you see a serious drop which we didn't see here. We see the drop more going to the semi-final. And yeah, for Germany the drop is here and then it actually goes quite constant. It's I like to see those curves and you see Brazil. This is where Germany was, more or less. You can see how Germany's chances have dropped with that one loss. Well, yeah. similarly a flat curve for Group B, just to go back and we see the steepness for reaching quarterfinal for both Russia and Uruguay. Well, let me know what you thought about uh, the predictions, how, how I project things to go, who you think will go through. Um, maybe you do also some calculations. Uh, of course, we can always check against betting odds, which are part of these calculations, but I also like to put in the other um, ratings as maligned as especially the FIFA rating is, I think there is some slight value to it and they are all highly correlated. So uh, makes it a little bit more interesting to me to have those also. Well, I guess I will talk to you soon with more calculations in the next few days. If you enjoyed this video, please hit like and subscribe to my channel. If you've already done so, I would like to thank you for your support. It is very much appreciated. Also, check out the accompanying blog at the link provided in the description below and at the end of this video. Thank you for watching and until next time.